Yes. Go ahead, you're alive. Well, hello everybody. It's Bom Gizek from the Great Lakes and... Hi everybody, it's Ningabi Gizasikwe. And we are here to tell you some stories and show you some nice things. Right, Shannon? Yeah, we have a lot of nice things to we show. We got some nice things to show. And so we're both Ojibwe and we live way far away in the bush in the north. And we live without electricity, without uh, running water and things like that. Um, so it's really nice to be here. And how do you like living here, Shannon? It's really nice and it's really different. Shannon is my partner. We're like a husband and wife. Sometimes we act like we've been married for 55 years. Um, but how long have we been together now for a couple of years, eh? Yeah, I yeah, it's, a couple it's, of years. it's been pretty good. So um, I want to share a story with you right off the hop. This story is how porcupine got its sharp quills. Now, how, do you know what a porcupine is? It's like a little animal that has really sharp spikes on its back. And if you touch that porcupine, that those porcupine quills are going to go right into your skin. And you're going to go, wah, wah. Then Shannon's going to be like, oh, my goodness, what's wrong with you? And she's going to try to help you. But to help tell the story, ta-da. We have little Nana Buju. Now, Nana Bush is like Maui off of Moanda. And Nana Bush is a shapeshifter. Nana Bush made the clouds and the stars and the land and the rivers and the trees. And so Nana Bush is actually going to tell the story of how the porcupine got its sharp quills. So here we go. A long time ago, there was a porcupine and it didn't have any quills. And this porcupine was being pestered by a big old bear. And that bear kept chasing that porcupine. Finally, that porcupine ran up the tree. Boop, 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 boop. And when it got to the top of the tree, it screamed down and said, leave me alone. Finally, that bear just gave up because it, didn't, it was too lazy to chase the porcupine. And of course, the porcupine went down the tree. The next day, the porcupine went into the bush. And it crawled into a bunch of thorn bushes. Now, you know what a thorn bush is? It's like, it's like those bushes that have really sharp spikes on them. And porcupine went in there and started to take some of those thorns and put them on its back. And of course it went walking around and the bear came back and tried to, to eat porcupine. But guess what? One of those thorns got stuck in the bear's mouth and that bear was like, ah, and it took off running. But Nana Buju seen what happened and said, porcupine, you're so smart. Let me help you out. And all of a sudden, Nana Buju started to dig in the ground and got a whole bunch of clay, put it on the porcupine's back, and then grabbed those thorns and peeled them and put them in the back of the porcupine. And because Nana Buju is magical, like Maui, those thorns stayed there and they became the quills. And that's how the porcupine got its quills, as told by Nana Buju. Now, this is Nana Buju, and Nana mm -hmm. has a grandmother. And can you actually show us Nana Buju's grandmother? This is Nana Buju's grandmother. And what's her name? Look, miss. So, and she has a little medicine bag, cool. and it's all beaded. Nice. Nana has got a pack sack. I like your little doll. Yes, I like Nana Buju because he has a heart. Ta-da! So you made your doll, right? Yes, I did. And how long did it take you to make your doll? And what is it made out of? 
Well, it's made out of um, hide, the dress. So it's made out of a hide and I sewed it all up together. And you're probably guessing what's inside. So I just stuffed it with some fluff inside. Nice. And then I just found some, some of the stringy stuff um, that you could do arts and crafts with. And I found it, so I decided to make hair with it. It's very beautiful. Thank you. My doll is made with rabbit hair on top. It's got cool. it's got some it's actually got flowers inside of it. I picked wild flowers, and the flowers are inside of this doll. And over here, it has wampum. What's and wampum? Wampum? That's the name of my favorite band. Wampum. I'm just kidding. But that would that would make a great name for a musical band, wampum. The wampums. Okay, the wampums. So we're gonna show you what wampum actually is. And so you see the string of beads here. These are beads made out of a shell. And you can see them. And guess what? This is the shell here. Mm -hmm. And you see the purple in the shell? That's the purple in, in these beads here. And a long time ago, they used to make beautiful belts out of these beads. Mm -hmm. And of course... Shannon, if you want to hold this up. Ta-da! There is one of the belts made out of the beautiful beads. Isn't that beautiful? And that is a very, very important belt. So it's not only beautiful, but what does it mean? It means gadonaganana in the Ojibwe language, which means our dish. And so when you look at this here, they used the, the purple part of the shell right here to make the purple part in the middle. And this represents a beaver tail. And in the middle, there's, of course, a spoon. So it doesn't look like a spoon in the middle, but that's what it means. Yes, it means a spoon. And this belt was created a long time ago so that peace could go across all of the lands. And so many Native people love this belt and they became a part of it. And they knew that if they had this belt, that they had to be nice to each other. And so being nice to each other is so important. Mm -hmm. And that's what wampum is. So again, wampum, wampum, wampum. Now, can you say wampum? Good job. Good job. I know you all said it because I heard you. I did. And in Ojibwe, we call wampum migus. 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 Mm. Like me gis. Me gis. Jody, look at you, look at the canoe up there. Ta-da. So I helped Shannon. Me and Shannon helped make this canoe and we also made some other stuff that we want to show you so let's start what off with we do? let's start off with the amazing uh, beadwork that you did okay so here is my beadwork and these are all tiny little beads i'm zooming in really close so you could see there's some flowers a sun and a moon and a little diamond in the middle. And this is what I like to make. And this is gonna go around my arm when I'm done. And then I'm gonna attach this to a glove. So this is gonna be a part of a glove. And so I started on my second one for my second hand. So I still have more beading to go that just seems like a lot of sewing. It is. How long did it take you to bead just one of these? For one of these, I had to take a lot of breaks. Seven but years. Me... Seven years. <laughs> it took me three days to do this. 
Wow. But it's funny when you're really committed to finishing a project, you'll do it right away. So this, this, all of this took me one day. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And I'm going to show you the gloves that I made. They don't have the beads on them because I'm not much of a beadwork person like Shannon, but I'm going to show you the gloves that I made. And these are beaver gloves, the same type of gloves that Shannon are going to make, except mine don't have any beads. So Shannon, if you could pass me those amazing beaver gloves. Okay, get ready. Ta-da. Okay, so. Ta-da. Look at how big these gloves are. These are made out of beavers. And inside, it's rabbit fur and deer. And so the outside of the glove, like when you put your hand in there, isn't oh, it? Oh, it feels so nice putting my hand in here. It almost looks, it's like putting your hand in a big fluffy cloud. Hey? It feels so, so nice. It does. It does. And these are huge. These are like winter gloves, like made for serious cold, cold winters. And what is the fur made out of? The fur is made out of beaver. And of course, in the Ojibwe language, beaver is a mick. A mick. And this is elk, elk hide. And in the inside, there's deer hide and rabbit. So this is all natural. This is all natural, made from the forest. All of it. And so can you put your glove on? Yeah. And um, I, want us to, I want us to do something. There. Now, I want you to go like this. I can. And I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Ani. Ani. Anish Eshtigayan. Anish Eshtigayan. Kawin Dinzinziwan. Kawin Gazinziwan. Um, Gitche. Gitche. Nendam. Nendam. And what I'm saying is, hi, what are you doing? And I'm happy to be here. And so that's what we're saying using our gloves. And that's the native language. Ah, Nishin. 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 And so part of our culture as Ojibwe people, of course, we love making our dolls. We like love beating. Love beating. We love making our mitts to keep us warm. Oh, oh, I wanted to show them something. Oh, wow. So these are little baby gloves ah, and these are very old they are old these were made a long long time ago and they have beads on them they were made ten thousand years ago cha just kidding they were made probably when i guess probably before i was born yeah before you were born definitely yeah but they're very old um i also made some moccasins Ooh, what are moccasins? Moccasins are shoes, and I'll show you. And you know what? I just happen to have them. Right here. And so these are Ojibwe shoes. Oh, aren't those so beautiful? And they're made out of moose hide, as you can see. And right around the edge, you see how they're sewn together? That's called puckering. They're puckered moccasins. Mm -hmm. And they got the beaver fur on there. Ah. And they got a triangle on there to represent a little house. And these are moccasins for around the house that I wear when it gets a little bit cold in the morning because it's so wintry here. I put them on and my feet are so warm. And so these are moccasinun. So I want you to repeat after me. Moccasinun. 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 It means shoes. These are shoes. So, so far we learned a little bit about the wampum, 
the shell, the beads, the belt. We learned about the uh, the dolls, which of course are right here. There's Nana Buju and Nana Buju's grandmother. Amazing, amazing dolls. And we learned a little bit about the gloves, which is pretty cool. And also the porcupine story. But before we continue any further, Shannon has something very special right over here in that case. And I wonder what it is. Okay, so here is the case. And it was made by somebody and given to us. And I wonder what's inside. A whole billion, gazillion dollars. Dun, da, 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 da. <gasps> what oh, is wow. that? It's so pretty. Wow. So you could guess what it is. It's an eagle feather. It's an eagle feather. And why is this in this case? To protect it, yes. And what is the significance? Why are we protecting this eagle feather, Isaac? The eagle feather is a very sacred thing. It's a very important thing to the Anishinaabe people. And it represents flight and vision. It represents, you know, being close to spirit and all of those things. And the eagle is a very sacred bird. And so we keep the, the eagle feathers in these cases so that they, they're nice and flat and that they're always protected and so that nothing will land on top of it and break it. And that's what this eagle feather is. And we call this miguan. 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 That means feather, eagle feather. This one here, migaze miguan. So repeat after me, migaze miguan. Migaze miguan. And you know what I like to look? I like to look at eagle feathers and I like to look at what I could see inside of it. You could see some sort of pictures. You could see the sky maybe or clouds. That's mm. what I like to look at. That's that's really neat. Yeah, there's always things in those. Yeah. Beautiful pictures. Nature is mysterious. It's so beautiful. Mother Earth is the greatest artist on the whole Mother Earth. <laughs> okay. Now we have another thing that we want to do. And this is where Shannon's specialty comes in. Because Shannon is a champ. What is this? It is a... That is a, a piece of wood and hide. I'm guessing a drumstick. Yes, you are right. And this could be used as a pretend microphone. Hi, everybody. This is CP2KK Radio, and my name is Isaac Murdoch. And today we're going to be talking about feathers, wampum, beavers, grandmothers, nanabujus, and also mittens. And I'm here with my co-host, Shannon. And we are going to go live in five, four, three, two, one. Shannon, take it away. <clears throat> okay, that was kind of dumb. I'll even, so, I'll even admit that. <laughs> so this is my hand drum. And this is actually made out of hide too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sing a song Okay, which song should I sing? That is completely up to you. Wait, I will just Are you gonna sing with me? I'll I'll hum with you. Okay. I'll hum with you. Shannon's a better singer, so I'm just gonna like kind of follow her. Okay, here we go. Okay. Hey, hi, 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 hi,
that's pretty amazing. That was a good song. That was a great song. So the drum. Again, it's a piece of hide on the drumstick. You got a handle. You got mm. this thing and on top. And these two look different. They do. They have different styles. Yeah. Different kinds. And then this is Shannon's drum. <gasps> wow, look wow. at how it's all weaved together. Like a spider web. Shannon, where did you get such a beautiful drum? I was gifted to it by from you. Yeah. And so you see the beautiful webs on there? It's like a spider web. And there's a stick right in the middle. That's a stick. And so this is a drum. It's made out of hide. But the hide is dried. So it's not like the hide on the moccasin. Because that hide, the hide on this moccasin is soft. It's soft. This is a different kind of hide that's hard. <laughs> and so when you hit it, it makes that loud boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're, when you're singing. Yeah, why, yeah, 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 so there's different styles of singing and there's different styles of drums my drum is this drum is shiny Ooh. You know why it's shiny? When I put my hand on here, it's I put bear fat on there. Bear fat? We make the fat out of a bear. And Ooh, we, could we see some bear fat? Yeah. Here, grab onto this amazing, beautiful drum, and I'll be right back. So he's gonna show us bear fat. So while he's there, I'll show you this side of this drum. So this one is totally, totally different than this side. And here we are. This is a jar of kwamade, which is actually called bear fat in English. In Ojibwe, it's kwamade. And it's like lard. And guess what we use it for? We put it on our face. We put it in our beautiful hair. Did you know that I'm 85 years old? And how do you look so young? Because I put this bear grease on my face every single day. That's so beautiful. And Shannon's 104. And she puts this on her face and that's why she looks so young. <laughs> so if you want to look young, gotta put this on your face. It'll make you look young forever. So anyway, I think our time is just about up. Um, do you have any special words that you want to say to these amazing kids before we go? I just want to say thank you for joining in here and being with us today. And thanks for listening. And oh, I just want to say I love you so much. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. We will see you later. Take Bye -bye. care. Take care.